An area that's important for auditors is to review the IT projects. We have many, of course, IT projects that are running, often at a very considerable expense. So when we are looking at projects, we want to look for cases where, well, budget overruns. We see cases where the, quite simply, the organization has spent far more than was actually allocated on this project, or where it's obvious that the project is not going to be able to complete within its allocated budget. This is an indication to IT and IT audit that we need to then review that project. We need to make sure that the funding will be there. We have to make sure that management is aware of the fact that this project is in jeopardy. And of course, the other thing is time. So many projects end up running late. And we need to have, of course, a focus here on trying to ensure that we deliver in a timely way. If we see continuous project overruns both in time and budget, that is a symptom of some problems with our project management. Maybe a project management is just not good at estimating, or in some cases, we have too much scope creep where we're continuously making changes to projects that weren't properly then reviewed and authorized for their impact on then the schedule or the budget. We often say that project management comes to that iron triangle where, for example, we can change the one side of the triangle as scope, another is the schedule or time, and the other one is budget. Those three elements are really locked together. And if we're going to change the scope of the project, we're going to have to change then, obviously, the budget and time allocation. And yet very often little changes creep in that we don't realize how many changes have actually been made and how this will make it impossible for that project to deliver on time or on budget. The other thing is that we went through a lot of work at the beginning of the project to gather the requirements from the user. These have been documented and hopefully put into a design. The idea of the design, of course, is that we then go back to the user community and say, if we deliver this product, will that meet your requirements? And they should have signed off on that that says, yes, if you do that, we're happy. Well, the problem with that is that if I have not correctly then uh, ensured user satisfaction, there's a good chance we may not deliver what the user wanted. But the second problem is that even if I have user consent, sometimes we, when we get into the reality of building it, we find that maybe the design was not feasible. There are things in the design that may need to be adjusted. Now that's fine. We can obviously, in the end, the objective is not to deliver a project according to the design, but it's to deliver a project that works. But that means that if we make changes to the design, those should be documented. The system documentation should always be updated. So we have the ability to make sure that the system documentation truly reflects the system. Now, the issue, of course, with this is that sometimes the reason that a change was made was the developer just ran out of time or in some cases found it too difficult. And so they didn't do some of the things that well, really should have been done. So as an auditor, we have to check that. We have to check to make sure, is the as built equal to the as designed? If it's not, have those variations from the design been properly documented and approved by the users? So the users realize that what they're going to get is not what they actually signed off on at the end of the design. The lack of documentation has always been one of those almost funny stories, of course, of IT development projects. We know that in many cases, developers hate documentation and they use excuses like the code is self-documenting. But the problem, of course, is that maintaining of software is gonna be very difficult if we don't have documentation that says what the design and, of course, purpose of the various parts of the project were. 
We also, of course, realize we have a lot of problems with network configuration. Many organizations don't even know what their network truly looks like, which means it's very difficult for them to be able to put in place proper network architecture, network security, and so on. This lack of documentation is chronic in many IT departments. Very often we see the rush to get a uh, product into market means that, well, we'll do the documentation later. But as we know, the moment the project is in production, the entire development team is disbanded and put on other projects, and obviously the documentation quite simply never gets done. The other area is this area of properly controlled change. We should have a change control process in place to manage change. So to make sure as we're going to make changes to a project that we do then ensure that all of those changes have been documented and approved. And the things we have to then do as part of that approval is to make sure we've understood the impact of that change on budget, on scope, for example, and as well to review to see would that change possibly impact even on the security of the systems where we need to make sure that those changes, we understand the impact of them.